Hi, hello, welcome to Argumenta, the podcast stage to discuss deliberate and debate on various contemporary social, legal and political issues. So um, today we have come up with an explainer video. It's not a podcast session. And what made me do this video, or what triggered me to do this uh, explainer video as such was a recent incident that had happened in our country. Uh, so before having a notice or pondering into that issue, I would like to state one legal principle that we learn when we are in a law school. It states, ignorantia juris non excusat. In simple words, ignorance of law is not an excuse. So on this note, I'll get into this news report. Uh, according to its report, it states that uh, a TikTok star, a 19-year-old TikTok star, was arrested for charges of rape and impregnating a minor. Uh, this had happened on 13th of June, 2021. This is the news that we uh, actually observed on this particular day. Uh, what is so special about this news? Because very unfortunately, rape cases in India are rising on a day-to-day -day basis. And it is a very pretty saddening situation and altogether a different uh, notion to be established in this aspect, along with the observations to be made. But what made me feel owed about this particular news report was what all incidents that happened following this particular news. So to go in depth or to just get into a glossary of this particular news, stated that this individual was arrested for impregnating a 17 year old girl. Uh, he had provided a promise that he'll marry this, lady, marry this uh, child. Mm, and uh, he tried to abscond when he got to know about the pregnancy news, followed by which he was arrested is what according to police reports uh, or what the police reports did. Now getting to my concern, news that has gotten leaked, there was another audio that was released. And this audio uh, was alleged to be the audio that belonged to this 17 year old girl. And this, the, the content of this audio stated that uh, the individual who got arrested has not done anything wrong. And this was completely a consensual relationship. And this pregnancy is also consensual is what that was stated in this audio. And this audio allegedly, again, I, I repeat this one because they claim that this belongs to this girl. I'll keep that aside, first thing. Uh, secondly, there was another, so after, soon after this version of audio was released, individuals, a lot of people came up supporting uh, this person, stating that he has not done anything wrong. This is completely consensual. Both of them were uh, willing to be in this relationship. There was a, the rape charge was false, or this is a fake news. So a lot of, lot of tags uh, followed this particular audio. I am nobody to claim whether this individual is uh, convicted or whether this individual is guilty of this crime. I'm nobody to claim it. I'm nobody to state any comment about this uh, activity because it's under investigation and it is a, a, very, a reasonable prudence may be applied to understand this aspect. So I'm nobody to claim on this aspect and this is completely up to the court to decide whether the individual is convicted or not. I'm only concerned about the point of view of a group of people, of a major, I mean, of course, a good number of people uh, who came up with an argument that stated that this girl had provided complete consensus. Both of them have, both of them were in love. They met each other via social media, all those things that had come up. So now I'm being dragged back to the uh, principle I just stated before. Ignorantia juris non excusat. So let's talk about what do we call as age of consent in India. So age of consent is the legal age at which an individual can decide or an individual has actual consensus to commit towards sexual activities or to agree towards sexual activities especially with respect to women. This is particularly with respect to women. And this age of birth had been 16 most recently. And after 2013, as we all know, the most unfortunate uh, and tragic Nirbhaya gang rape case, uh, the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013 instituted a lot of reforms with respect to uh, crimes, sexual crimes per se. And this age bar has been uh, rising to 18 years with respect to consent. Legally, whatever consensus, although this individual had provided the so-called consensus to, to get involved in a sexual activity, that we only consider null and void before the law. So this argument does not make any sense 
before the law and for which our ignorance of this aspect of age of consent creates a lot of problems in the society, especially in this modern age. Because whatever that has been happening till date definitely has preconceived impacts on this generation. And if this keep on happening, things are going to get just worsened day by day. So that is the first aspect of discussion that we have at hand. Secondly, why do you really think that India has an age of consent bar at 18 years? Because different nations have different age bars with respect to age of consent. Uh, there are nations with 12 years, 13 years, 14, 16 and all as their age, ages of consent per se. But in India, uh, it's 18. So why do you think this 18 years is an age gap for us here as an age of consent? Uh, I would like to analyze this aspect in with the help of a focus. Primarily, what do we call this? Sex education. Secondly, what do we call is protection of children against sexual offenses? The aspect of adolescent sex education. So uh, we might have heard this, what do I say, uh, this term for a pretty long time. I mean, for a number of times we would have heard about this aspect. And uh, often I've noticed a lot of memes, a lot of troll pages mentioning about sex education in a very lighter note uh, in this manner, stating that you have this uh, to be taught in your eighth and 10th standard. And a lot of teachers have a tendency to just skip up, just skip the portions that are there or just to ignore the chapter as a whole because they're pretty shy to present this before the students. Uh, this is not the case of all the teachers. I'm not generalizing it, but there are specific instances. And a lot of us would have experienced this kind of, uh, what do I say, a deliberate ignorance of this particular aspect. But actually, the impact this lighter note creates on these adolescents is pretty huge because when they grow up they do not have the much required knowledge or the whole intention behind the idea of sex education is completely nullified just because we ignore this fact or just because we ignore the need to teach them at this at the younger age so what does sex education intend to teach children or to teach the adolescents. So sex education is basically the instruction of issues related to human sexuality. So there are a lot of uh, emotional trauma, mental, physical trauma that people have to undergo when they are actually ignorant of things that are happening around them. So sex education basically focuses to make a note of a lot of portions, including human sexual anatomy, sexual activity, age of consent, Pretty important, age of consent, sexual reproduction, uh, reproductive health, followed by mental and physical health, reproductive rights, safe sex, birth control, and sexual abstinence. So when an individual is instilled with the knowledge about this important aspect of life, they make sure that things happening around them are well, uh, or at least they are aware of things that are happening around them. And incidents of this manner do not repeat. I cannot blindly claim that lack of sex education is the sole reason for the increasing number of rapes or the increasing number of sexual crimes in the country. All I can state it is, is that it is one among the attributes for the increasing crimes by minors and against minors in our country. So the first aspect I would like to uh, make a very critical note of is the reduction or the, or the lack of sex education among adolescents. Otherwise, nobody will uh, ever come to make a claim that this individual had provided consent to involve in a sexual activity with a major or by a minor girl. Now, the second aspect I want to discuss was Protection of Children Against Sexual Offenses Act compiled with Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 uh, and a specific mention to a couple of important notions under the IPC. Protection of Children Against Sexual Offenses Act 2012 is basically a, a statute that would require a greater understanding or it, it definitely requires a deeper understanding into the act as such. But to make it on a, what do I say, on a simplified terms or to make it understandable better, uh, it is a gender neutral act, a gender neutral act, because unlike the provisions of IPC, which do not recognize sexual assault against boys or against uh, males, uh, POXO 
recognizes both. I mean, it's a gender neutral, gender neutral act. And this has been an enactment that was passed in 2012, uh, considering the extreme number of sexual crimes that are committed against children below the age of 18 years, considering their vulnerability and their immature stage. And uh, beyond the scope of it, every procedures that are established by law uh, in order to execute uh, the provisions of BOXO uh, are completely child-friendly with respect to the statement recording, with respect to the trial and all those aspects. So an individual who is uh, charged or booked under Section 376 of IPC will also be uh, charged with the, with the relevant provisions of BOXO uh, when a sexual assault is committed against a child. A child here is gender, gender neutral. Now, uh, with respect to why this particular act is relevant in this particular, in the case that I had mentioned before, was because the individual who has been accused for this particular, for the alleged rape, was committed against a child by age, who is uh, less than 18, who is of less than 18 years old. And Coxo addresses both penetrative assault and known penetrative assault in this, uh, within the sections three to section 10 of the act. Uh, now, this is one of those, uh, what do I say? Very much progressive, very much uh, relevant acts that we have to take into deep consideration with respect to sexual offenses against children. So when we discussed just before, uh, I had discussed about the aspect or the need to address sex education as a major uh, aspect in our education system, POXO obviously will find its place when sex education becomes relevant uh, for the adolescents, adolescents who are being taught about this particular aspect. Because beyond the scope of the topics that are discussed or addressed in sex education, just as I stated before, there are more, a lot of other things, especially with respect to the possibilities of health hazards, mental hazards, psychological concerns, children will have to undergo at minor pregnancy stages or the adolescent pregnancy stages are something that have to be critically analyzed. And this has to be taken to deeper consideration when we discuss it on lines with uh, folks with respect to age of consent. Because a lot of, I've, I've heard about a lot of uh, motions where people literally intend to keep the age of consent uh, as 16 years or to bring back the previous age and to bring down the cap of 18 to 16 or less uh, should be addressed with something that is medically valid or with respect to something the statistics clearly state. So according to the reports of the w, uh, WHO, at least 10 million unintended pregnancies occur each year among adolescent girls who are aged between 15 to 19 years. And approximately almost 12 million girls who are aged between 15 to 19 years and at least uh, 777,000 girls under the age of 15 years give birth each year in developing regions. So this is a statistical report that WHO has provided uh, officially. And this is, of course, an alarming rate of adolescent pregnancies, which are not acceptable due to a lot of reasons. So if I consider biological reasons or medical reasons with respect to the risks that are attached to this uh, particular ambit, include uh, physical risks uh, like eclampsia, pupil endometriosis, systemic infections for the women who are impregnated uh, between the uh, age, age group of 10 to 19 years and attached to it with respect to the children who are born as such, who are not stillborn or beyond the scope of it, include low birth weight, preterm delivery, and severe neonatal conditions. And definitely something that has to be addressed would be the age gap between the mother and the child. Now, moving into the social aspects of it, with respect to the education, the career, almost every aspect of this adolescent girl, or uh, the stigma, the taboo, the discrimination, and everything that is attached, possibilities of maternal mortality, morbidity, lasting health problems. So ultimately, both medically, socially, physically, or in every ambit of life, what the adolescent girls will have to undergo due to this particular pregnancy has something beyond our scope and imagination. So people who are in support stating that the lady provided consent will not stand valid legally. What I intended uh, throughout this explainer 
was to establish a focus. Once again, I repeat the word focus, because when we make a statement without knowing the real background of it, that's why uh, I had made a comment in the beginning itself that I'm nobody to charge an individual guilty or to prove somebody uh, or to convict somebody because I'm just a layman before the court because it is completely up to the court to decide who has to be convicted, who has to be acquitted. That's completely beyond my scope. But when we make comments uh, that state that, okay, the lady had provided consensus, that lady had consensus, irrespective of understanding that she was a minor, uh, is completely misleading, especially for those people who read through them or who go through them and will develop there's an automatic development of perspective, especially among the people who are like, you know, literally influenced by uh, those individuals. So uh, on this note, I hope I was able to uh, make a brief idea about the entire concept I had in mind. So uh, once again, this is a reminder to all of us, sex education is not something that has to be taken at a lighter note. It has to be something that must be instilled on children at their adolescent age minimum, because Ignorance of anything of this importance can create a lot of problems, which we don't detect soon. But majority of the people face such problems as they grow up and as they start to face real situations. And uh, yes, with this, uh, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned for more videos from Argumenta Podcast. Bye.